Hello, everybody. Welcome to Bears Best. I'm Elijah, your host. Thank you for tuning into another beautiful episode. Um, just a little recap. This right now, this intro, um, is going to be after the podcast. I just ran back upstairs to shoot this. One minor announcement. I forgot to turn on the audio recording. So this microphone, obsolete, doesn't exist in the next episode or like in the actual episode. I have it and it feels cool and it like brings me some sanctuary and like makes me feel secure by holding it, but it's turned off. So all the audio will be just microphone on the camera. And I apologize for that. And it probably will happen again, but not the next time. I will be sure of that. And probably not the next time after that, but maybe down the road, I'll probably do it again. Just not hit this little button here. Um, so I am heated because we go pretty deep, you know, you stick around, you're going to hear a lot about my life and, um, some trials and tribulations and some successions, some failures, some setbacks. Um, but yeah, you'll get to learn a lot about me and get to see a lot into my mind and I hope you enjoy and probably do something similar to this down the road again and just kind of pinpoint some more stories in my life early on, um, yeah it's more reflection but yeah this one's gonna be different than the last few so hopefully you like it and hopefully you learn a couple things and hopefully you stick around and come back for the next episode until then enjoy the podcast deuces thank you for tuning in to another episode it's just gonna be me today a little solo dello change it up a little bit i wanted to go over who i am what I've been through, what this is, what this has become, what this all is going to turn out to be. Um, but yeah, I've been thinking about it and I think it'd be good for myself, good for the viewers, good for the podcast to build a base and let everybody know who I am and kind of what I'm about, what I've been through, how I've got here and where I want to go. Um, so I guess the structure of this episode is going to be talking about my upbringing, how I, how I see myself, how I saw myself developing, looking back now as a older human being. Um, we'll go into my fighting career, we'll go into sports in high school and whatnot. Um, we'll go into some uprises and downfalls in my life. We'll go into my dreams as a kid, my dreams as a young adult, my dreams now. Um, I don't know, just kind of a see where it goes summary of my life and whatever tangents I happen to take. I hope they're engaging and I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot of juice to be closing out of everything I've been through and what better place than here to get it all out and get some eyes and ears on all of this and have you guys have, give a give you guys a better understanding of what's going on, how my head works, how I'm wired, um, why I do the things I do, and stuff like that. Um, so without a further without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump in. My name is Elijah Rocks. If you guys have made it this far without knowing that much, welcome to the party. Um, I grew up in Spokane, Washington. All my life, I still live here. Um, grew up on the South Hill, going to local elementary school, which was pretty cool. Um, grew up playing sports, started wrestling when I was about four years old, playing baseball right around the same age. So athletics have been a big part of my life, as long as I can remember. Um, and that's kind of stuck with me. So I think that's a I'm super glad I got involved into wrestling. Um, I guess I was a little terror as a kid and wrestling my dad and tearing up the house and my parents called me Bear growing up and that's kind of stuck. Um, so that's where we get Bear's best, kind of a just a little inside into that origin story. Um, I got a bear tattooed on my arm. So that's a that's a pretty big part of my life, Bear. Getting called Bear by my parents and close friends especially, it means a lot. If, if you know me by Bear or call me Bear, then we've probably been through some things and that's pretty cool. So. Um, cheers to all of you guys. Um, but yeah, grew up wrestling. Is all, all I can remember is wrestling and baseball. As a as a young kid, and wanting to play with my little brother outside, wanted to go play football, wanted to go play basketball, wanted to go play tag, go be outside. 
So I've always been running around and getting into mischief and, you know, playing and breaking a few windows here and there on accident by throwing the baseball too far. Um, so yeah, sports played a big impact early on. Um, I have a little brother, Kins, and then I have two younger sisters, so I'm the oldest of four. Um, we grew up in a small house with two parents. We always had a couple of cats, a dog or two in the house. Um, so the house was chaos. On top of that, we had a daycare every single day at the house. And that sucked. Come home from a long day at school, rigorous work around people I don't want to be around, and come home to a house full of kids. Uh, that got old. So after that, I got out of the house as soon as I could. So right after I graduated high school, I made a dumb decision. I'm still paying for right now, literally, of going to some bullshit college in Seattle that I had no business being at. Um, paid way too much money to just live away. Um, but it was good and I'm glad I did it. Uh, intramurals were fun. I worked out a lot. Um, I worked out the hardest I ever worked out, trained probably four times a day for fighting and um, came back and ended up winning seven titles with the fences. Um, so that was cool. I guess I had to work out hard, but I paid the price for it out of my pocket and parents' pocket that none of us could afford. But it was a learning lesson and I learned a lot, developed a lot as a person over there by myself. Um, so I was much needed. Seattle was really cool. I could never see myself there again just because it's kind of, I don't know, just not my scene. People there are kind of funky. Um, but anyway, let's rewind a little bit. Sports, wrestling and baseball. Baseball was my favorite. That was a lot better of a wrestler. So that like winning felt fantastic. So I pursued the wrestling thing a lot more and um, started doing MMA at I think, 14. I went to my first MMA class with my dad. Um, out at the hit pit, that's no longer in existence, but I went there for my first class. Um, I took my first fight at 15 years old. Um, I remember going into Mr. Emerson's math class um, in full, like full sweatsuit, five sweatshirts, two sweatpants, two layers of socks, my wrestling shoes, a hoodie, my hood cinched up tight, and that by that point it was third period, and um, I saw it cut, I think, like, I don't know, five or six pounds before weigh-ins that day. Um, so I was in high school. I had to have been a sophomore at the time. Cut out of class early because I had to go cut weight. My parents gave me a note that I could leave school. I took the bus from the South Hill out to Pines. I know beyond Pines, so I could go to the Valley YMCA. Cut weight by myself. Took the bus back up to Pines so I could go weigh in at the, at the venue, made weight. Um, all by myself in the middle of high school and fought, ended up winning. That was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it's just weird looking back like a kid in sophomore math class cutting weight and then taking the bus to go cut weight for a fight against a grown man. Like, not a lot of people have done that. So I think that just like calluses the soul a little bit and like I feel like my outlook is just different on life, which it's kind of bittersweet. I get a lot of, a lot of like, my girlfriend hates it because like something bad will happen um, to me or to her. And I'll just like brush it off and be like, yeah, it, it, it sucks. And, but what can we do about it? And then just kind of move on where like a normal person might have more sympathy and be like, dang, like, that really does suck. Let me let me help you with this and you know, talk about actually what's going on. But I guess just that callus that I've built up from times like cutting weight by myself and losing 20 pounds in a day and getting in a cage and fighting somebody twice my age and you know getting knocked out in front of a thousand plus people and I don't know all that stuff just kind of gives you a different outlook on life especially when like negative things come up so i'm still trying to work on that and, like deep callous my mind and soul and heart just because it like it feels good to let empathy out and let emotions come in and especially in a relationship it's good to be 
on the same level with your partner as far as like being able to comfort them at their level instead of dealing with the problem how I usually deal with problems, which is don't deal with it, just like ignore it and push on and don't ever think about it again. Um, yeah, there's one of those tangents that will pop up, um, but yeah. Cool, anyway, back to cutting weight. That is a shitty time. I don't know if anybody out there has cut weight, but I started cutting weight, I think the first time I can remember was eighth grade before like our big end of the year tournament. I had to lose like five and a half pounds the night before I started going at the tournament. Um, I called up my buddy Logan Riley to come over to the house and we um, dressed up in black hefty bags and ran up to our local elementary school and ran ran sprints in the field until we were sweaty and jogged back home and crossed our fingers and like, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Cause I didn't have a working scale at the house. Are you kidding me? Cause like cutting weight, you gotta be precise. Like our scale was probably three pounds either way. And that's not doable when you show up to school and be like, oh, well my scale said I was fine. So yeah, cutting weight for a long time. And then in MMA, it's a lot different because you get like a full day to recover. So you, more than likely we'll have to cut a lot more weight just to like, I don't know, fit in. Whoever decided to cut weight is dumb because everybody cuts weights basically. So if you're at 165, you probably will go down to 145. 145s will go down to 125s. Um, and everybody's basically the same. They just lower themselves equally to a worse level, make it harder on themselves. So that sucks, but you learn a lot about yourself and you learn a lot about, you learn a lot about sucking, like being in sucky situations. And you learn a lot about yourself based on if you quit or not, or if you think you quit, think you want to quit, but keep going and then succeed. That feeling is pretty good, but there was only one weight cut, my very last one. So out of 30 MMA fights, I've cut weight for all of them, cut weight for all of high school wrestling, and then a few middle school wrestling matches even. So every weight cut except my very, very last one, it was at a point where I was I wanted to quit. And if I didn't have somebody there to be like, you've done it before, you can do it. Like, let's just, let's just do one more, one more session at a time, one more sauna, one more cardio session, one more hill sprint. I probably would have quit because you feel like death. You feel, it feels like the front and the back end of your stomach lining is touching. It feels like your mouth starts to get glued shut. It feels like every demon and negative thought in your body is just screaming at you. Your ears start to ring. You can hear your heartbeat. You can see your heartbeat through your chest. Um, veins pop out that you didn't even know you had it's like you almost turn translucent there at the end and it's it's miserable uh, you probably see it in my eyes but i'm having flashbacks of just pure terror sitting in a sauna going out running laying down getting covered in towels looking like a mummy drying off all the sweat going back into the sauna doing it over and over and over and over again i think the most i've done in a day was like 16 or 17 pounds in a day, not even exaggerating. And that's not even the worst, like, especially these guys in the UFC, you know, like five years ago when it was really bad. Now they're getting a little bit better and they're really, really good fighters. Like Mike Kiesa, for example, are going up a weight class and not sacrificing as much so they can compete at a higher level and have more power and retain that mental edge. Um, so that's proving to be really effective now at this high high level and hopefully more people can take that approach but um yeah I forgot where I was going but cutting weight sucks and that also kind of put a callus over everything because that's a really really low point in my life and I had to go there and dig deep many times um so like it makes a lot of, a lot of other things in life seem not bad where 
as a regular person would see it and be like, dang, this really, this really sucks. I don't know if we can make it through this and stuff like that. And I'm just like, yeah, let's do it. Like, come on, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, but yeah, check off cutting weight to this conversation. Um, you know, we'll go back, we'll go back to after, after that little college stint, I think I did like three months of school and then just stayed in my dorm for another three months and then go to classes and just played like intramurals and worked out and then came back home. Um, came back home, moved out to a duplex with one of my buddies from high school. Um, we had a bit more. I started working with my dad doing our landscape when I was right when I turned 16 just because I was tired of not having any money, you know. I wanted to do things, I wanted to have gas money, I wanted to get a car, I wanted to go to the movies if I wanted to. So I started working as soon as I could, um, basically digging holes and picking rocks for, for quite a while. I did commercial irrigation and landscaping from 16 to 25, 24, 25, with some breaks in between. I like, I delivered pizzas and Worked at the catering thing in Seattle when I was there. Um, but yeah, I didn't really have any guidance in my life as far as understanding that I could do whatever I wanted. If I worked hard for it, I didn't realize that there was actually a way to pursue dreams. Um, I didn't realize that if you work hard, you can basically do whatever you want. Um, that was never expressed to me saving money was never a thing credit i never knew what credit was or how to do credit how to build credit i didn't know the importance and value of good credit score i didn't understand the value of um really anything financially we didn't have money i didn't have the best examples of finance and just success in life really um yeah and i can say that um because it is what it is, you know, and there's no covering it up and lying about it or pushing it on, under the rug. Not gonna help me, isn't gonna help anybody. Um, so yeah, that, that is what it is. And then so doing all that hard work, like um, shoveling and picking rocks, I go listen to a lot of podcasts and I got to hear a different perspective than I hear, heard growing up. It was, Growing up, all I ever heard was my family and my friends. My friends were my age, still dumb and didn't know anything just like me because we're children. And then my parents only knew what my parents knew. And so it's, I was closed off and like heading down a road that was already built for me. And I didn't realize that I could go on a different road, travel down a different alley, end up somewhere different than what was set out for me. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at right now in my life is understanding that the roads are limitless and I could go any direction. I could go backwards, I could go forwards, I could go to the stars and to the moons if I want, if I want to work hard enough. But, you know, it's not going to be easy, but it's there. And some people are going to take it and succeed and some aren't because they're too tired and lazy and they're going to keep going down the path of suckiness and not having joy in their life and not having money and not you know building a happy family and a happy wife and happy kids and building a house and stuff like that because that's what i want and i didn't know that was really attainable until quite recently the past couple of years even um another tangent i had no idea where it's going um Coming back on a duplex with my buddy, working, working. So yeah, did irrigation, listening to a lot of podcasts. Adam Carolla taught me a lot. Joe Rogan really taught me a lot. Um, there's a lot about life and philosophy and the value and hard work. You know, Adam Carolla couldn't read throughout high school. I, don't, I still don't think he can even really read that well. I think this dude like a multi, multi, multi-millionaire. Like he collects cars, like kids collect Hot Wheels like Paul Newman race cars, like literal race cars. Um, like just for fun, cause he can, he's interested in it. 
and he worked his way up to the top of the mountain and now he's getting to reap those rewards and so I learned a lot from him growing up well not yeah growing up I was like 16 years old learning valuable lessons from him um one of the key things that he said that has always stuck with me is like like for example let's say you have a pile of shoes in your bedroom and you have a thought crosses your mind of like should I pick those up or should I just walk away into the kitchen he was like if you're having that thought in your head and that internal argument chances are you should do it so just fucking do it if there's a thought in your head of should I do this or should I not you know the right answer is to do it that's why you're even having an argument so just fucking do it dude like and of course I uh, it, it sucks now because like I'll walk up to the situation of like dang I got four shoes out of the box like should I pick them up or should I do tomorrow and then I think about that quote of like if you're having the argument chances are that you're supposed to do it you should just do it and then I'm like eh, it's a great argument but it's a lot easier to just not do it and then just don't do it and then I'm like dang I should have done that but yeah so maybe that will stick with somebody else too and it's definitely convinced me to do a few things where I wouldn't have done it if I didn't think about that quote in that situation. Um, so yeah, maybe that can stick with you at some point. Um, let's go back and let's go back into fighting. I did my first fight at 15. That was cool. I fought Brandon Manning. I got a first round knockout up in Pines. I had a bunch of my friends there. That was really cool. Um, I think I maybe did three or four training sessions of like, I asked this guy how to block a kick, how to how to block a head kick. Um, I was enamored by UFC and WEC and cage fighting as a young one. I think 11, 10, 11, 12, I started watching all the pay-per-views. Um, started wearing all the tap out gear, wearing all the UFC stuff. And I was just a really big fan of the competition, the cool t-shirts, Mayhem Miller had a red strap in his hair, so I had a red strap in my hair from 7th grade to maybe even 6th grade. Mm -hmm. I think 6th grade, 6th grade to maybe freshman year, I had a red stripe off center to my head, strapped all the way front to back, just like Mayhem Miller. Um, it was cool, he was on a show called Bully Beatdown where these people would send in submissions of this dude bullying him, and the bully would get challenged by a UFC fighter like, oh, excuse me, like um, um, Jake Shields, and then this professional fighter would just beat the shit out of this bully on TV, and that I thought that was really cool. Um, but yeah, did a lot of fighting. Ended up training all over with uh, Joel Thomas at Warrior Camp, Sik Jitsu for a couple of weeks. Um, I did Spokane boxing. To just did pure boxing for a while after McGregor did that. Um, but most of the time I was training and working out with my dad. Um, he was a really good conditioning coach and a good, um, he was a good coach. He pushed me, he knew what I needed. Um, I learned a lot from him. I ended up having 30 fights. I think I was like 24 and six overall. Had six fights pro, I think three and three or four and two. Not fantastic, but by the end, I wasn't really in it for all the right reasons. Um, yeah, I think I was in it more to impress and um, like get val validation from everybody, particularly my father um, and my peers. You know, I was known as the fighter. I was known as this badass UFC guy, um, the wrestler, the guy that could beat everybody up. And so that stuck with me and I was like, dang, this is my identity. I can't stop. Like, so I just, I kept going and I kept taking one more fight, one more fight. And we took a bunch of bad matchups, a bunch of fights that I probably shouldn't have taken. Um, and yeah, looking back, it's scary because brain damage is irreversible and the ramifications you don't really even know until it's 45 years from now and you're slurring your words or forgetting your grandkids' names and stuff like that. So after like all the recent NFL studies and the boxing studies of the human brain after um, brain trauma and like realizing how really bad it is, that kind of put it into perspective for me. It was like, 
if, you, if, you're, if I'm not in it to be the very best in the world and I absolutely love every second of it, then it's not going to be worth it because it's it's my health and long-term health especially that I'm going to be worried about. Um, so that this is really the big thing that took it away from me. Well, not take it away from me. I stepped it aside happily. Um, and then, like I said, cutting weight freaking sucks, man. I don't want to cut weight anymore. That sucks. It's really bad for your body. It's bad for your heart, like your soul. It's bad for your, bad for my mind. Um, and I enjoy alcohol. I enjoy Cinnabon. I enjoy pizza way too much to be devoted to MMA and devoted to keeping me like a perfectly fine-tuned performance body like it's a lot of work and also I'm enjoying being in a relationship and like building a family here pretty soon I wouldn't have time to make my girlfriend happy if I'm working out four times a day and working I would have no time for her my mind wouldn't be with her with our dogs with our cat with building building this business up from nowhere like there's just so much more that goes into it besides fighting. Like, yeah, I miss winning. I miss getting my hand raised. I went and I miss the walk-off knockouts. There's nothing in this world that's going to be able to replace that. And that sucks, but the negatives far outweigh the positives as far as... Well, yeah, everything I just said adds up and is a lot worse than... Like, it's not worth it to get that knockout and get your hand raised and have all the crowd cheer. Even though that is really, really, really freaking nice. But like now I get to substitute it with building cool videos, building cool videos for Allie and seeing those pop off, getting great pictures and videos for clients and seeing them love it makes me like that triggers that endorphin rush and that serotonin levels to go up. Um, so yeah, I've been able to luckily find something to kind of trade places with it, which is pretty nice, but definitely not the same. But then again, there's a lot less negatives to this. Like the worst day I can have is a podcast does bad or like my YouTube episode doesn't get any views or I don't get any love or, you know, maybe my battery dies when it shouldn't have or I'm not prepared properly, but like that's nothing compared to cutting weight for all day and not being able to eat or drink anything. Um, yes, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, gonna take a short, quick break. I'm going to jump right back in and pick up where we left off and then see where we go from there. See you on. Alright, welcome me back to the show. Thanks for sticking around. Um, I think we left off talking about why I quit fighting. Um, so yeah, I quit fighting. Luckily, one of the best fights I ever had in my life. Um, this was at the Roxy Center up in Hilliard about four and a half years ago now. Um, I had a couple teammates fighting at the event there and somebody backed out of a kickboxing match and they needed me to step in or they needed somebody to step in. They asked me, at the time I was there with my coach um, enjoying a couple of cold ones, I think I had two beers previously and I was like heck yeah I'll fight dude like I'm feeling loose I feel great um shoot let me go and that just so happened that in the basement was our gym at the time so I ran downstairs got my gloves and shin pads and shorts and mouth guard was there ran back upstairs and told them my walkout song and there I was fighting like out of nowhere kickboxing match with this dude Adam he was a beast um my walk-up song plays. I go down, walk down the aisle. Crowd's going crazy. They weren't expecting me to go. That was cool. My team was there. My family was there. Um, ended up having one of the best fights of my life. Um, pieced this dude up. Was having fun. Was ripping nasty combos. Um, and, and ended up getting a TKO early in the second round. Um, finished him with punches standing up. Ah, oh, yeah, win, woo. Celebrate. Um, then I left the cage and then I was going to watch more of the fights and there was some empty seats out in the crowd. So I walked over there still sweating, um, had my gloves off and um, I was working on taking my hand wraps off. And I was sitting next to my brother taking my hand wraps off. 
was like, hey, dude, uh, you see that you see that girl down there? I was like, do you think that's her brother? Or like, do you think she's on a date? Like, sh she's cute, but I don't like, I wanna go talk to her, but it looks like she might be with somebody. And he was like, um, well, yeah, cause like they're, they had no chemistry. So I was like, is it her brother? Cause like, they don't really look like they're that into each other. And I forget what my, I wish I could remember, but my brother said something like, dude, it doesn't even matter, just go talk to her. And then, like, as we were talking, she looked at me and I looked at her and it was like the most stereotypical movie time where we just like looked and both smiled. They're like, oh, oh God. And I kind of froze and I like looked away. And like, I was like, oh God, don't look, don't look. And I like looked again and we locked eyes again. And um, I didn't end up talking to her. I'm a puss. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a giant puss when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, but like I was riding, I was riding so high after that win, I saw this girl and then she saw me and I knew that she saw me see her and it was like, oh my God. Um, and then, so I went back to the crib and it was at like 1 a.m. I got this like on one of my pictures. I was like, I was laying in bed and my roommates and some other people were still partying or talking and smoking or whatever. And like, I threw some clothes on right now. I was like, yo. That girl from the fights, look, she liked my stuff. I was like, I'm in, boys, I'm in. And like, I was so hyped, and like, I messaged her right there. I was like, yeah, I got fun at the fights, da da da, I saw you there. She's like, yeah, you did so good. Um, and yeah, it turns out she was on a date with this dude, and that dude's mom bought them the tickets and like went to the date with him, and she's like, oh, I was not feeling it. He was weird. Made her buy her own McDonald's or something that day. I was like, oh yeah, red flag. Um, but yeah, it started from that fight, getting that dub, locking eyes. Just the perfect, just like, love at first sight. It's like, whoa. Like, she was stunning. Beautiful blonde flowing hair and a white shirt. Just like, wow, she stood out from everybody. Um, yeah, and then I saw, I seen that notification on Instagram. I'd celebrate, and I was like, from there I knew. I was like, oh man, here we go. And here we are, four and a half years later. We got a, we got a crib out in the valley. We just got a puppy. We're going to LA next week because she's working with Jim Shark. Um, I'm her little cameraman. We get like we're working together. We're gonna build something awesome. Like we're gonna build an empire. That's what we're hoping for anyway. And we're having fun. We're having love. And man, I'm like I'm getting flashbacks right now. That's cool. Um, but yeah, that's where we are right now. I'm doing I'm doing my thing. She's doing her thing that coincide and we're building each other up perfectly. She's just starting a YouTube channel. Go follow her at Allie Jo, A-L-L-I-J-O. She was posted her first workout. Um, yeah, just a quick 10 minute abs if you want to get this beach bod right in time for summer, go follow along. Um, I don't know, I'm sure there's a lot more I want to talk about. Maybe we can have an episode two of my origin stories. Um, but yeah, the biggest part is fighting, getting out of fighting, starting this. Allie, she's a big part of my life. She saved me from a lot. I was selling drugs and doing drugs and uh, just being reckless and not caring about a lot of things. And now here we are, a lot better mentally, physically, spiritually. I'm just I'm better all over, man. I feel like I'm sure I'm going to douchebag to a bunch of people here again, but they probably deserve it. Um, oh yeah, my mom died. If you're still listening, that was the part that's pretty important to me. Um, but yeah, she got to meet Allie. And now I got to meet my mom. Um, that's really, really cool. My mom loved Allie and she She's like the only girl I've ever been with, and my mom's like, yeah, she, she's a keeper. Like, I'd be right by her, and like, don't fuck it up because you're not gonna find somebody like her again. So I think that about that all the time. When I'm being an asshole, just like, dude, don't, don't fuck it up, don't blow it. Um, so yeah, that's cool. I'm glad my mom got to meet her and vice versa. Um, yeah, I think we're, gonna, we're making her proud. I think. That everything happens for a reason. Actually, no. Hmm. Yeah, that's a whole topic for debate. And I have a later podcast, but definitely wouldn't be here if 
everything hadn't gone how it went. So I guess everything does happen for a reason. Yeah, I think I just solved my own end, my, my debate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things could be a lot different right now. Like, if I lost that fight, if my mom never got sick, if I, if I lost a couple of fights that I won, if I won a fight that I lost, if I didn't get in that car accident, if yeah, a lot of big things, a lot of big negatives turned turned around into some positives. So. Remember that because I've gone through some shit and I've been through a lot of, a lot of, a lot of bad stuff for like a regular life. But it can be okay if you know how to persevere and look on the bright side and just keep going and wait for that time to shine and make that opportunity count if it's presented to you. That's a big thing, you know. If you have if you have that opportunity, just go fucking take it because you might not ever have it again. And it sucks to look back and say, I wish I would have done this or like I wish I would have tried a little bit harder. So we'll just go for it now and do all you can to be the best that you can in any situation at work, at the gym, at your sport, um, any task that you have, just do the best and be undeniable. That's something that I've been thinking about the past few months with my photography stuff especially is just be undeniable, get the best photo possible be undeniable and there will be no argument on the table for if you're good or you're bad or if that's a good picture or if you're doing the right thing or not. If you're undeniable, there's going to be no room for debate. And that's kind of like where I want to see myself. And that's the effort that I give for most of the things that I do right now. Um, yeah, I challenge you to be undeniable in whatever you can do in this next week or two. Just be very conscious of it. Any action that you make, be undeniable. Um, yeah. I guess that's it. Little one on one sit down. This is Bear's Best. There's a little crack into my life. Um, like and subscribe. I'm sure we're going to do a giveaway. A thousand subscribers. Another giveaway. So tell your friend. Tell your mama. Tell your partner. Tell your loved one. Um, yeah. Hit subscribe. Hit like. Feels great. Endorphin Rush. Help me hit. I love it. Um, until next time, do some jokes.